We have traveled all over East Africa, finding hardworking farmers who are making a good life on their shambas. We want to learn from them, turn their farms into good businesses, and help them increase their profits. Join us and see how our farmers benefit from the experts' advice. And share their experiences as we shape up their shambas. <laughs> Karibu to the Shamba Shape Up Safari. Welcome to Shamba Shape Up. We are in Okalo Koko Shamba in Homa Bay County. Now, Mr. Okoko is going to be quite a challenge, for he is a model farmer. Now, so we want to find out if our experts can take him even higher. Aha. So, let's go and see how they get along. Okal lives with his wife and daughter on their farm in Homer Bay near Lake Victoria. Mr. Okal! Hey! <laughs> see, how you can you, see. Sir? Oh, doing well, thank you. Good to how see are you. you. Nice very to see fine. you too. Yes. Good to how see you. you sir? Yes, yes. Oh, beautiful faces. Ah. <laughs> thank you. Now, Mr. Okal, everybody yes. says you are a very, very good farmer. I wonder how good it is. <laughs> but if it is, yes. I'm sure at your hundred percent. There's always room for improvement. Oh yes, That's there's true. always room for improvement. Yeah, Thank you. Right. Now we've got our experts with us. Mm -hmm. Would mm -hmm. you like to meet them and then they challenge you? Oh for sure. Where mm -hmm. are they? Okal is keen to get to work. Luckily our experts are already hard at work. One in the greenhouse, one in the cow shed, one in the grain store, and two more in the shamba. Teresa from Mea is inspecting his greenhouse and she has seen some problems in his tomatoes. I think it's a soil problem. Let's go find out. So, Teresa, first of all, how should a farmer know when or what kind of fertilizer mm -hmm. they should apply? Now, uh, how a farmer knows uh, about fertilizer, what type to use, and especially the correct amount, because you know, again, you can know the right type, but not know the correct amount. So it's good to take your soil for testing. What can farmers do to overcome acidity in their soils? We normally advise farmers, especially who are doing horticulture or vegetables, to try and use a, a fertilizer that is a bit neutral. It doesn't acidify the environment where the crop has been uh, planted in, like uh, mea pimazao, that is what we normally use. And uh, the beauty of this is that it has uh, granulated lime. So if you have any issues with acidity, mm. then it will sort it out. And the, and the lime is actually a natural product from the sea. Yeah. So it is very organic if you're targeting organic. Yeah. Then that particular fertilizer has 10% nitrogen, 26% mm. phosphorus and, uh, for the roots, and then 10% of the uh, potassium. So it is very ideal for horticultural crops, and most of them including not just the vegetables, but also tomatoes. And uh, from our research, that is what we have found out. Mm. And again, as we move on, we need to also add some nitrogen to boost. Yes. I know Mr. Koko adds some manure, but yes. sometimes the compost manure that you use might not have the nitrogen that is required, especially because mm. of leaching, you know, when you prepare it, it mm. goes down. And leaching is actually the losing of nutrients downwards. Okay. When I was visiting the tomatoes, I noticed that you have um, the tomatoes, some of them are rotting at the bottom, uh, a sign of calcium deficiency. We have a product, a foliar product, uh, called Fatty Leader Magical that has calcium magnesium. So if you use it as a foliar, then you can be able to solve that problem. Let's, let's go to his next planting. Yes. What should he do now to get better, better crops? We have a new product mm. uh, called Biofix. And um, this product is one of the few things that help organic farmers, especially if you're doing extremely organic farming, you can use this for your legumes. Things like French beans, things like groundnuts, soya and the beans and I know in each homestead there must be some little beans being grown. Mm -hmm. So this is a natural way of adding nitrogen into the soil mm -hmm. and into the crop. How do you apply Biofix? Biofix has two components in it. When you get a pack you'll get something called gum arabic and then you have uh, the Biofix itself. You'll just take the gum arabic, mix it in 300 ml of water, then after mixing it in the 300 ml add to the 15 kilos of seed Mix it well, add the biofix, mix it and then plant immediately on a moist soil. 
-hmm. That is as simple as it can get. It takes between five to ten minutes to do that. Mm -hmm. And you do it only on the day of planting. Mm, Mr. Okoko, as yes. an expert, have you ever used biofix? Not really. Exciting to try. Ah. And see how, what the result be. Okay, good, good. so we'll give you this as well oh, to try. If thank you very soil. much. Mm -hmm. Thank you, I appreciate okay. it. So now, if Mr. Okoko follows your advice, mm -hmm. what are the results? Uh, you see, if you're a commercial farmer, uh, you have to do your economics before you use any product. And if you look at some of those products we are looking, we are, we are talking about, like the physiolith, this is a long-term product. When your soil is not producing, it means you're not getting anything out of it. But if you're able to solve your problem now, then it means even your future generations are catered for. So we are not just looking at a problem now, but oh. solving for the future. Because soil term. is wealth, yes. Long term. Yes. And now, mm -hmm. we've got to go because Naomi is there with an expert who's going to talk to you more about green drums. And maybe you might know something about it. I'll find out. Let's go and find out. Thank okay. you so much, Frieza. Okay, you're welcome. Right. Okay. Thank you. Naomi, I hope I haven't kept you waiting. No, 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 no you're just on time. Mr. Okar, more expert advice. Yeah, Good, yeah, thanks. Thank nice to meet you. Well, Philip, you've had a look around the store. So what are your observations? There are so many things uh, which are in the store apart from the food stuff, apart from the cereals, uh, which is not good. I can see there is even an engine, uh, which is the diesel and petrol. Mm -hmm. And the petrol, which is not even good for a human uh, part of it, because then it, it, it mixed with the food stuff. Mm -hmm. It will really contaminate the, the food. And the end of the day, it can even uh, come up to the human uh, health hazard. Would I like to advise the farmer to remove some of the mabatis around here, some of the implements, some implements within the store, so that the store can be clean. We noticed you have legumes. Oh, yeah, I have the, the, the green grams. The green gram. Yes, is this from the last harvest? This yes. uh, amount you see here is from the last harvest. Mm -hmm. I love the green gram as a okay. dish in my house. Right. And the rest of my family loves it. I'll continue growing it. Uh, this is a good harvest. Uh, it mm -hmm. is encouraging for a farmer. Yeah, I can see he has a, a very nice pick bag, an improved mm -hmm. storage device. It stores uh, crops without using any chemicals, and also it saves money. The pig's bag is a good way to store grains without using chemicals. If you use it properly, no pests can live in the bag, so the harvest will be safe from pests. To use a pig's bag, first make sure that the two plastic liners are inside the sack and don't have any holes. Then, fill the bag with the green grams. Shake it so that the grams are packed well. Then, tie the inside bag into a knot tightly, so there's no air between the knot and the grams. Then, tie the second bag into a knot and then the sack. Store the pig's bag on a pallet in a clean store. Ensure your pallets are high enough, at least 5 inches above the floor. Always leave 1 meter between the wall and your sacks. This is a scouting distance. Are the green grounds drought tolerant? Even when there is very little water, it will grow very well. The green gram acts as a nitrogen fixer in the mm -hmm. soil. Right. Yeah. So it helps the soil, even if it's poor soil. Is that yes. what you're saying? Yeah, it mm -hmm. improves soil. But how much money does it fetch in the market? Is it good? Yeah, it's very good because uh, if you go to a market, you find a bag goes for 15,000 mm -hmm. shillings. Uh, if you calculate the gross margin of uh, uh, green grams compared to other crops like maize, it has a very higher profit margin. So like for instance, if you had uh, half an acre, so how much would you be harvesting from there? Uh, half an acre, you can harvest uh, from four to six bags. Well, right. So and how long does it take before you harvest? Of the green grams takes only three months. Oh, really? Yeah. Storing green grams is a good idea. It means you have a good supply of healthy food for the family and you can get a good price at the market after everyone else has sold their green grams. It's good to see he can keep his family and his soil healthy just by growing green grams and storing them properly. Now, it's Mr. Coco's turn to be the expert. That's right. So we've asked him to share with us his number one top tip in farming. The idea I would like to share with my fellow farmers is the concept of reducing the incident of nematode 
and uh, wilt by sterilizing the soil using hot steam. On the right side, hot steam from the boiling water goes to the left tank, which has a platform to heat the soil. The lower pipe would provide heating from below, and the upper pipe similarly heats the soil from the top. So after one hour, the temperature would be so high, sometimes 80 degrees Celsius. This concept works and it is helping us. That's a great idea. And I bet some of our viewers will be adopting that technique. And it's not more expensive than boiling water. Coming up after the break. We'll get to the expert in the cow shed. The other two are in the chamber. One for the soil, the other for the maize. If you'd like to receive all our Shamba Shepherd leaflets, SMS the word ALL together with your name and address to 30606. If you'd like to receive just the leaflet for this Shamba, SMS the name of the farmer together with your name and address to 30606. <laughs> Welcome back to Shamba Shepa. We are in Homa Bay with Okalo Koko. We have checked out his greenhouse soil and his grain store. Now it's time to look at the cows and then the maize. Okalo has four cows. One is dry and in curve, and the other three are milked. He thinks they are doing well. I wonder if the expert from Unga agrees. Andrew, there you are. Yes, sir. Now, how many liters of milk are you getting from your cows? One gives me eight liters a day, another one gives me six. Mm -hmm. The highest gives me 10 liters a day. 24 liters from three cows. Andrew, is that good enough? Not good enough. Mm -hmm. From three cows, you should be getting at least 15 liters per cow per day. So, from three cows, you should be at least getting 45 liters of milk per day. Mm -hmm. How should a farmer feed their cow. Try to mix the dry matter more with the uh, green grass, that's the nepe grass and the caliandro you talked about, so that at, le it, at least it increases the digestibility of this dry matter. If you feed with the roughages to the fullness of the stomach, then you start doing the concentrates, the feeds. Now when it comes to milk production, a farmer who does five liters of milk per day, you can easily get that amount of milk from feeding uh, roughages like this one behind me. Once you get to five liters, above that, you need to supplement the cow because it, only, it also needs to give its own body nutrients before it gives you milk. So, in simple terms, any two liters of milk above five liters of uh, milk per day for one cow, you need a kilo of dairy milk. To grow cows that will give you lots of milk, you have to start early. For the first three months, give calves Fugo early winner pellets. Then, from three to eight months, give Fugo young stock pencils. From eight months, give Unga alfia meal. This will make sure the calf grows well and gets the right size for service by the time she reaches 14 months. Two months before she calves down, start giving dairy meal. When she has calved, give one kilogram of dairy meal for every two liters of milk above five liters every day. So, if she gives you 12 liters, you need to give her three and a half kilograms of dairy meal every day. How can a farmer recoup back the money they have spent? Because as your responsibility as a farmer is first to take care of the health of the cow, then feed it the, the roughages, mm. give it dairy meal. Then if the cow is healthy, nutrition is okay, profits will follow definitely. How important is the breed? The breed depends on the geographical location of your farm. For example, you are in a lowland area which is very hot and humid. It's not very conducive for the fresh and cows, which are meant for the highlands. Alternatively, keep more of the ashes and the ganses, which will be 
able to tolerate the weather in, in this locality. Mm -hmm. well, thank you. And I hope this is not the end. I hope that you'll be working with Mr. Koko to make sure that he gets lots and lots of milk. Mm -hmm. That sounds great. Thank Good. you very much. Thank you. So, choose the right breed for your area. And remember, the cost of feeds will be covered by the profit from the extra milk if you do it properly. If Okal's cow gives 20 liters per day, eating 7.5 kilograms of dairy meal, she will be giving him 700 shillings a day on feed costing 240 shillings a day. A good profit of 460 shillings a day. Okoko has found out how to improve production in his greenhouse and his cows. Now, we think conservation agriculture can give him bigger harvests, and Wilson is here to explain how. Conservation agriculture is based on three pillars. Right. And the farmer to be able to reap or to benefit fully from conservation agriculture should practice the three principles. Okay. One of them is minimum soil disturbance, and that is applying only the area where the seed is going to be planted. Mm -hmm. The second is soil cover, permanent soil cover. And there are two ways of doing that. The two ways of doing that is by using live crop, like dolichos or sweet potato fodder, sweet potato, or even uh, desmodiums, which can also be used to feed the livestock. Mm -hmm. The other uh, soil cover is the dead mulch, which, like in this farm, we have the crop residue, which is maize yeah. Right. The third uh, practice is crop rotation. Mm -hmm. And crop rotation is by either planting the cereal after the legume, mm -hmm. or planting also, uh, let's say, a deep-rooted crop mm -hmm. after a shallow-rooted crop. Right. And the farmer, to benefit from conservation agriculture, must practice the three uh, uh -huh. principles. Let's find out about direct planting. After harvesting, there are five steps to preparing the land for the next planting. Leave the crop residue in the field and only dig the soil where you plan to plant. This makes less work and less work means less cost and more profit. The first one is to cut the uh, crop residue into relatively smaller pieces. And the second one is to control the weeds which are in the farm by spraying a herbicide, an appropriate herbicide that is available. The third one is to ensure that the farmer digs holes, that is immediately after the weeds have been uh, controlled or in the process when the weeds are being controlled, then the farmer should dig holes which are relatively bigger than just one hitting to ensure that uh, the hard pan is, is broken, one, and two, to ensure that we have enough service uh, that can trap runoff. And then the other uh, step is to put uh, manure, and the manure can come from any livestock. It can be cattle manure, it can be uh, sheep or goat manure, it can be manure from donkey, it can be manure from horses. The fifth stage is to cover the manure, which has been placed in the hole by covering with the soil. In that case, that hole will then be ready for planting. So Wilson, what are the, the benefits of conservation agriculture? Uh, there are two benefits. One is short-term benefit, mm -hmm. then long-term. Mm -hmm. The short-term benefits is in land preparation. Right. And uh, also the inputs that the mm -hmm. farmer is going to use is less. Uh -huh. The long-term, some of the long-term benefits mm -hmm. are reduced soil, uh, soil erosion. Mm -hmm. There is uh, improved soil fertility and there is also increased infiltration. And mm -hmm. in this time when we have big climate change, right. we should be able to use this system of conservation agriculture mm -hmm. to mitigate against the problems of climate change. 
So no need to hire a tractor to plow the field and no need to remove last season's crop. Minimum tillage gives the soil a better life so it's ready to feed your crops and give you a bumper harvest. One more expert today and is hard at work still in Ocal's field. Alvin, I see you are very busy. I am. Aha. Tony. How are you? you? Fine, fine, fine. Calvin, tell us, why is a variety of seed very important when it comes to planting? One, because each seed falls under different altitude. And each altitude requires a specific variety for that region. Then the performance in terms of yield, and also the performance in terms of disease resistance, and also in terms of drought tolerance, differs from one variety to another. Okay. What variety would you recommend and why? For this region, we recommend variety known as Simba 61 because this is a region of medium altitude with a moderate rainfall, not too much, not too little, and that's the variety which will fall here. It will also take between four months to four and a half months to produce that from planting to harvesting, and then it is the strongest variety, the reason why we call it Simba. The strongest, as the Simba is the strongest animal in the jungle, meaning it cannot be affected by any other disease, name them from grey leaf spot and other diseases. It will also not be, uh, it is very drought tolerant. The drought will not affect it. And above all, it is very yielding, up to 45 bags per acre. Aha. What other requirements do you need when planting it? You need, number one, to do proper land preparation. And we recommend you do minimum tillage. Then after that, you will also be able to do the right spacing. 75 from, from row to row and 25 from seed or plant to plant. You have planted maize before? I have done so. How was the harvest? Harvest, uh, the highest ever I've gotten is 15 bags per acre. <laughs> How does that sound? That sounds bad. Because with the 15 bags per acre, and if you sit down and do a gross margin analysis, he will realize he's making a loss. He's running himself out of business. He's running himself out of business, exactly. Uh, where could have gone wrong to achieve what you have said? Two points are very clear here. One, the timing of planting. Most farmers wait for planting and they come in late when it has already rained too much. They are waiting for the rain until it comes and they come to plant a bit late. It is important to know that a day delayed planting is like a bag of uh, maize yield lost. So early planting is the key. That's number one. Number two, the right variety for planting. And I am emphasizing that for this region, Go for Simba 61 and you will never get it wrong. Mm -hmm. Sidco has varieties of seeds for every altitude and rainfall area. They also have field staff to help farmers find and plant the right variety for their farms so they can get 45 bags per acre that Sidco expects from its seeds. So I think we've covered everything. Yes. Mm -hmm. All the experts? Yep. <laughs> okay. Mr. Okal, what do you think of our experts? Did they challenge you? I thought I was the best. I thought I was doing things perfectly. But uh, I found out that there were some shortfalls mm -hmm. in their farm activities. I discussed with my family. It is going to be an improvement. So are you going to be using our SMS services? Why not? It mm -hmm. is the thing. Oh, okay, good, great. good. <laughs> well, then, Naomi, our work here is done. Yeah, right. And we'll see you in the next farm. This year, I had a good potato crop. I even harvested twice as much as I did last season. All this because I followed the weekly tips from Aishamba. And the best thing is, they are free. If you want these tips, SMS the word JOIN to 21606. Shamba Shape Up is also online. Visit us at shambashapeup.com. Select the episode and click play. You can also visit Shamba Shape Up's Facebook page where you can enter great competitions and also get involved in great, great discussions. Shamba Shape Up is also on Twitter at Shamba Shape Up.